We got to get down to business, wins and fails. Uh, from this past week, what stood out to you? In terms of wins, Jimmy, you're going to start us off. Oh, okay. Well, my win this week, you know, like, it's, it's all about getting impassioned and invested in, in, in the people that we are watching on television. There used to be an old term, talking people into the building. Obviously, in, in these pandemic times, we can't talk people into the building, but you can talk people into tuning in and, and anticipating. And what Edge did on Monday night on Raw was phenomenal. He got me, you know, after nine and a half years showing up at the Royal Rumble, I was so excited. And then having the match with Randy at WrestleMania, then the greatest wrestling match ever, and suffering the injury. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, now we're going to have to uh, uh, hope that Edge is okay. But, but after hearing that impassioned speech slash promo from Monday night, Man, am I looking forward to his return and 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 hoping for the best for him. I, I I just hope the young guys are taking notes because class was in session big time. And and let's pass this on to Randy too because Randy too get, deserves honorable mention because right now, as great as Randy is, he's doing some of the best work of his career I think right, right. now. And Ric Flair said it best: with Randy, it's so natural he doesn't even have to think. Yeah. So is, is that. Adam or uh, Edge's injury, like, uh, I don't know. Poor tricep. Oh, no, uh, the, yeah. So he had the surgery done already. Oh, uh, man. It's going to be. I didn't know I if know. it was like storyline or. No, no. He tore his tricep. So he's going to be. Uh, well, he's too whatever. old. He shouldn't be doing that. Hey, hey, no, hey. I'm hey, kidding. Hey, I'm hey, kidding. Easy, brother. <laughs> he's easy. my age. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jimmy, uh, I, I agree I, with you. Sorry, go ahead now. Oh, no, I was just gonna say I love uh, I loved uh, Edge's speech. I loved his uh, unwarranted takedown of Cowboy Bob Orton. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> very funny. Um, but uh, for me, I, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I love what Randy Orton's doing. I love what Edge is doing. I wish they were doing it with some other talent. I want Edge to work with younger guys. I want Randy to work with younger guys. I want those other guys elevated up to their level by working with them. I don't know how any younger talent gets help getting over when these guys only want to work with each other. If they yeah. want to move on and help some other dudes, I'm on board with it. And not that I don't love the story. I just wish they were doing it with some other people. Spread the love. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I haven't uh, seen you guys since Backlash and the, with the greatest match. And it was awesome. It was great. It was it had all the elements I love. Um, yeah, because the, what's the term? You know, if you, if you tell me, I'll learn it, whatever, a little bit. But if you show me, if you actually bring me in the ring and show me and do it with me, You'll, you'll learn so much more. Well, now that Edge's tricep is torn, Randy's going to be working with people. Hopefully when he gets back, he'll be able to spread and, and, and share that experience through touch and, and in the match and, and really help elevate everybody else. Um, it's incredible how, I don't know what it is, if it's just the time in the business, are they special people? But when they give promos, it's not like you, when you see people training, you know, this Thursday, I'm going to fight you for the belt and whatever. It's, it, it's real conversations. Yes. And those are the connections when it's just a real heart to heart. This is me as a man or a woman and, and, and just putting it all out there. And that, I mean, forget the wrestling, but yeah, even just with the promos, there's so much to learn and take away from those guys. When, when Edge was giving that promo, I felt like he was, I think, um, with superstars who have this ability, they feel like they're staring into your soul through the TV. And like, I know that Edge isn't only speaking to me, he's speaking to every single WWE fan who's watching Monday Night Raw. I think he was but just I, speaking to you, actually. Maybe he was just speaking to me. But I literally was like, I felt like Edge was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me and I was scared because I was like, this guy means business. Like, it was one of those moments where I was just completely, um, you know, nothing could take my attention away from in his eyes and, and the delivery, it was so natural. Uh, I, I, I thought that, you know, that promo was probably one of my favorite promos that I've seen in a long time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and really quickly, I don't disagree with Nug. Nug has an excellent yes. point about them. Those guys working with the younger talent to elevate them. But before they do that, this is how it's done, guys. This is how you can do it without having to do twisting, burning, 450 hammer phoenix splashes yeah. for no reason at all. You can tell a story in the ring. You can get guys invested. Here's what you want to do. We'll show you. And then later on, we'll do it together. And that's the way I feel it should be done. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? When you teach something, you have to teach it as a whole. 
break it down on the individual parts and put it back together again as a whole. So that was the whole. Now they're going to go work with everybody else and hopefully break it down and be able to put it back together. Break it again. down. Break it down. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Yeah. All right, Nug, your win. Uh, my win were the tag team matches. I knew it. Actual tag team <laughs> wrestling <laughs> matches on NXT on Wednesday uh, and Friday here in Canada. Uh, Imperium versus Brazango and Sasha and Bailey <laughs> against Tegan Knotts, Knox, and uh, Shotzi Blackheart. First of all, I got to say about Tyler Breeze, can you believe that Tyler Breeze, the whole time he was in NXT, never had a title? It makes no sense. He, I think he had an FCW title at one point, but once it became NXT, he never had a title. And Tyler Breeze and uh, Fandango were so good in that match against Imperium, and Imperium was so good as a result of that, which is exactly the kind of thing you want to see in NXT. Also, Sasha and Bailey finally making good on the promise they, they made when they became tag team champions, came to NXT to defend those titles. And all of a sudden, the women's tag team titles are on every show, being defended all the time, and there's interest in those titles. It's great to see actual wrestling matches for actual tag team titles on some of the shows, especially when it took forever for there to be a tag team match for the titles on Monday Night Raw. No, I, yeah. I, to I totally agree. And, and here's the funny thing, too, uh, to take it in a little bit of a different spin on that. Um, people tend to label NXT as the, quote, third brand. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that people like uh, the tag team champions, Sasha and Bailey and Charlotte and everybody who has gone I don't want to say back, gone over to NXT, shows that that brand is on an equal level to the others. And that's what I'm liking about this as well. It, it, it is, you, you mentioned Fandango and, uh, and Tyler Breeze. Nice to see them back. Those guys are awesome. They're very entertaining. I like where NXT is going because we're getting that nice mix of, you know, old school classic meets new school meets nice blend, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely helping uh, that cause to, to, you know, bring up the perception of NXT. Uh, it'll take some time. I, I think, so, and some of it too, so the things that we like about NXT, like, I mean, Jimmy, you and I like the fact that there's, the lights are down and it's more, the ring is accentuated more. Um, it's more for wrestling. But that's also the part that, that diminishes the, the, the perception because they don't have all the production value as well. So I like it better, but I can see how it might be seen as, oh, they're not putting as much into it kind of thing. Perception um, is reality, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if all three brands were like NXT, I think the industry would be better off with terms of production. Yeah. Now, Nug, what, do you, what are your thoughts on Sasha and Bailey? Because I feel like within a week's time, or maybe a little longer, I've like started to really like them. And that kind of goes into my win. Uh, but I just want to hear your opinion first. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, I think they realized that we don't care uh, if they break <laughs> up and fight. And I think they played into that on Monday Night Raw, where Sasha looked like she was going to challenge Bailey and then challenged Asuka. Play with our expectations. That's great. Uh, I'm fine with that. I don't, uh, I don't mind them uh, being on the same page and defending those titles all over the place because they should be defended all over the place. But also, it just makes me hate them more, which means whoever beats them is going to be someone I love more. And I think Iconics. that's the most important thing. Yes, the Iconics would be fantastic. Uh, that's, that was my win. I, I, I loved Sasha's swerve almost uh, at the end of Monday Night Raw with her when she was on the, when she was on the mic with Bailey. Uh, I love the fact that we're going to get Sasha Banks and Asuka at Extreme Rules, or you guys pronounce Extreme Rules better it's than I do. Weem. There's it's, a it, W it, it, in the middle there. <laughs> Uh, I, I love that because I think, because I was actually looking on Twitter after and people were like, no, we wanted, you know, we wanted Sasha and Bailey to turn on each other. I was like, am I the only one who did not want, I was almost watching that like, no, no, not again. No, no. And then next thing you know, she's like, Asuka, Raw Women's Championship. And I was like, this is perfect. I love that. She totally had me fooled. Uh, so that was my win. And, and I'm actually really looking forward to, to Sasha and, and Asuka. I think it'd be a good match. I think so too. Me too. What? Uh, you know what? Uh, you know what I loved about it, though? Because like you said, Caroline, people were expecting they're waiting for that turn. They're waiting for Sasha to yeah. turn on Bailey and stuff like that. Don't give it to them. Exactly. I Make thought that wait. way, too. 
Well, it's funny because Sasha, I thought she was stooging it off in the beginning by kind of just her demeanor changed. And I go, oh, here we go. Here we go. And then, ah. Oh. Asuka gonna kill you. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I, I love that Sasha's a little, like, it's, I'm a little jealous of Bailey, my best friend. You know, we're it's tag champs and she's got this other belt. But how great would it be if Sasha wins and then Bailey and Sasha are both two belt champions? Like, it's crazy mm -hmm. to think that Four they would have belt. all the women's titles between the th two of them. So th th there's va this is the thing that scares me, that there's enough value in having those two girls have four titles that I hope they don't, I hope Asuka doesn't lose it because of that, you know, because they can, yeah. for, for the bragging rights and the heat that they can generate by being so mm. oh, irritating. Um, <laughs> but, you know, anyway, that's, those hamsters there in the wheel. But if she doesn't win and she's jealous, then she goes for hers, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I, there's, I pretty, what's good, like you said, what's good, there's many different directions that can work. Mm -hmm. And they all work, yeah. Yeah. I like when I'm throwing, you know, a curveball with W. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe I was the only one who was like, "Oh no, it's gonna happen. She's gonna turn. They're they're gonna hate each yeah. other." And, and then some I was people, like, yes. they, 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 I must predict. I yeah. must predict everything." Oh, and, and then I have to like, if I if if they're right, if it what they predict happens, then they're like, "See everybody, I was right." Yeah. And then if they're wrong, what happened was stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, either that or they. They, they did it because I knew. Yeah, they changed it because <laughs> they know, they read my Twitter and they know. Yes, exactly. AC, your win. Ninjas. <laughs> yeah, uh, last week, and I didn't see you guys last time when, when, the, when the, the rivalry of the, the Viking guys and, and the Street Profits, um, and then, then, and then T T Tozawa shows up with like these ninja motorcycle guys and and first i thought oh god i hope he's not going to be thrown into the mix uh of the whole situation but anyway this week he uh was out there it wasn't had nothing to do with them but just he has a band of ninjas <laughs> and tozawa has just stepped up as this comedic figure he is hilarious and anyway he's a ninja and i just thought i, I love you know I may have dressed up in a, in a couple ninja outfits in my time. <laughs> can we can we see those photos? Oh, there's yeah. no photos. In the theory, <laughs> oh. you can't see them. I was a ninja. I was hiding. Oh, smart answer. Uh, for all we know, maybe AC was one of the ninjas that Tazawa. But the, actually, it, <laughs> go ahead. So so when I started wrestling, um, you know, it was a character named Johnny Giabasco, and I did. It was hard to really shoot out that 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 personality you know i was just kind of it was just a character there was no character and one day someone said can you do the double duty and i put on a ninja outfit actually and the, the name was sensei hiroshima or something like that and after the match everyone was like wow that was the, the most personality we've ever seen you have in a character and uh because i was wearing a mask and i had to pantomime extra and do all that kind of stuff maybe that's why i like it but ninja yeah i was a ninja once I, I, I'm enjoying Akira Tozawa. I think he's, he's fun in this new uh, iteration of himself. But I'm having a problem with a bunch of motorcycle ninjas who are just basically fodder for everybody else. Yeah. How good of a ninja are you when all you do is just get beat up? Hey, I'm just happy that all the ninjas are wearing masks. Uh, yeah. Such a nice comment. Caucasian social, ninjas. social distancing ninjas. That's right. <laughs> yeah. AC, your fail. My fail, same segment when, uh, with our truth, man. So, okay, just because somebody becomes or somebody is, is the comedic guy doesn't mean he's weak. You can be fun. Look at The Rock. Rock was hilarious and he was tough. Stone Cold was hilarious. And so, our truth now that he's funny, our truth, and, and he just doesn't fight and stand up for himself anymore, you got to have both. Now, if you want to get people really behind you, um, one, if you make them laugh, they're going to like you a lot, you know, because you're giving them good times and good experiences. But you got to stand up for yourself or else people, because also you have to remember, one of the main objectives for me anyway, and, and the way I, I teach it is that you, you want to be somebody that kids want to be when they grow up. And if you want to be funny, you want to be entertaining, that's fine. But you don't want to get beaten up. So it just takes, you got to stand up for yourself. If you want to, you got anyway. It's bothering me. I want to see him stand up for himself. 
Well, I get that, but I, I'm entertained by our truth. Our truth makes me smile every time he comes out, and he's he he's so entertaining. He, he's accepted this this uh, iteration of himself, and 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 more power to him. He's having fun. Yeah, I he was, has to was, again have a bad. You know, like eventually you lose your temper or you know, fight back. You know that kind of thing. I was glad to see him uh, not lose the title, but to lose it in an actual match instead of being surprised that someone snuck up on him with a referee for the 400th time. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Akira won the... Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm glad that, um, you know, the, the comedy of our truth makes you love him so much that whoever attacks him, Bobby Lashley, uh, makes you hate that guy even more. Yes. True. Anyone else sing with him when he comes out? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, uh, Audra, my wife, had to, uh, she goes, what are you singing? I said, uh, no, I just, what's up? So yeah, what's up? I'm mind. just saying what's up. <laughs> what's I'm up? just saying what's he up. He told me to say it. He pointed at me, so I said, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> his lyrics are kind of, uh, he has a scratchy voice. Sometimes it's hard to understand yeah. the lyrics. They work, okay. though. Jimmy, yeah. you're fail. Okay, kind of ties in with this. I, I, you know, I thought there was a missed opportunity last night. With the 24-7 slash I-95 South, whatever, <laughs> hardcore championship with R-Truth, I, I, I thought there was a missed opportunity with R-Truth and uh, Nia Jax. I thought this was an opportunity to maybe throw, you talk about throwing curveballs out there. There is a curveball for you. They had some interaction. I thought they interacted very well. That was very entertaining. I thought there was an opportunity there where maybe Nia Jax sneaks one over on R-Truth and becomes the champ. I just oh, thought yeah. that th I thought there was a missed opportunity to have some so, something different and r a lot of fun with the twenty four seven romance. I'd like to see a Nia Jackson R Truth romance. That'd be great. Uh, uh, you never know. Maybe down the line. But uh, again, there's something there that I thought was missed. No, give me pressure. Fail. Uh, mm -hmm. My my fail is this uh, is is the wild card random people moving around over and we're back to the trades. Uh, the trade happened. Uh, AJ Styles got traded for two guys. So Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler add up to <laughs> one AJ Styles. Uh, and suddenly Dolph Ziggler being worth half of an AJ Styles is in line for a title shot on Raw. I like all of these guys and I think people get really caught up with the trade stuff or with the wild card stuff. And that's fine. It's just a way to use guys on other shows. And that's great. But that trade announced last night makes no sense to me. Dolph was working with Sonya Deville. All of a sudden he's not, and he's on raw with a tag team partner. That's not there. And now because he's in a tag team, as he mentioned, he's now in line for a title shot. It's a bunch of weirdness. It makes no sense. And it makes some of your superstars look worth less than others. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would love to add to that, but there's nothing I could add to it to uh, accentuate what you just said because it was right on the money. Yeah, I think they, they started backwards. So what, what, what they did is they wanted Dolph over here. Um, okay, so we're going to get him here. How do we get him there? What's good enough, a, a good enough reason instead of the storyline driving him over, it was the destination first. and. I guess they deemed that good enough. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the way that it was done is weird, but I actually don't mind Dolph and Drew together. Oh, in the match. I'm, I think I'm that's fine, be no. yeah, I'm fine be with great, the result. It'll be a great match, but it's, it's, it, you need reasons. We, give us reasons right. for it to happen, and we didn't get any other Hopefully than, hey, I'm forget. here, guess what? <laughs> How'd you get here? Why are you here? Oh, yeah. I just showed up. I got, I got, I got lost, time. and now I'm on Raw. Yeah. <laughs> quickly, quickly before we, we head off, uh, my fail. It's not really a fail. It's just an observation. I want more Bray Wyatt content. And I want Bray, what Bray Wyatt's doing in his off time. I want more of his dinosaur drawings. TikTok, he mentions TikTok. I literally, as soon as he said he's been practicing his TikTok, I went on TikTok and I was like, Bray Wyatt, does he have an account? Why can't we get The Fiend or Bray Wyatt doing some cool TikTok dances? The, the, there's just so many possibilities for him. And, and I just want to see him do everything. Uh, to me, this is, I want to see what he does in his off time and, and watching that little promo, first of all, his promos to me are like the best. Uh, I, 
genuinely would stay on social media to watch what he's doing in his free time. And I want to see all of his drawings and all of his dances, uh, including all, obviously the stuff he does with WWE and inside the ring. But to me, there's just something very appealing to think about what he does in his spare time. So that's <laughs> kind of like my observation is I want more of that. Now that we kind of have a little glimpse into what he does in, in his off time, uh, I want more of it. Did you yeah, see Mysterio and his daughter doing little TikTok dances there? Yeah, yeah. But like she's so yeah. grown up. But it, it's amazing because I remember both her and Dominic, Aaliyah and Dominic, when they were like little kids. When they, yeah. you know, they, yeah, oh my god, she was funny as a little kid. She had like attitude, and she. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, but b back to Bray Wyatt, I, I am actually looking forward to following the buzzards again. Yeah, it's I, kind I, of fun I, to see Bray Wyatt classic. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. And, and, and Bray Wyatt is a very creative and entertaining guy. And, and see, like you said, Caroline, seeing what he would do on his off time and incorporating that and putting it out there for people to see, I think would be very entertaining. Wouldn't it? Can you imagine The Fiend doing a TikTok dance? I heard just that episodes, him and his brother. Just yeah. episodes of the Firefly Funhouse one a week, just yeah. online, yeah. just on Instagram or on TikTok or wherever. Just one okay. short little episode, like today we're focusing on Mercy the Buzzard and let's see what Mercy's up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I heard that him and his brother, they bought this land up north uh, in Florida, northern Florida, and they're making like some medieval, medieval, I don't know what you call it, like a Medieval times? Like a haunted house? <laughs> no, like just like the whole property is like medieval themed or something. Oh, they're building a wow. castle with a moat and uh, something. a raw bridge and the whole bit. And well, maybe Bray we're... Wyatt's kind of a wizard. So, and, and it's in a swamp. It's Florida. So he always was a swamp wizard. <laughs> swamp wizard.